Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. Well, I've got the most significant updates on the disappearance of Orange County teen Madeline Soto. I'm going to go through the presser. There was a presser uh, this afternoon uh, with a uh, chief uh, well excuse me sheriff <laughs> mina of the orange county sheriff's office and then i'm going to go over some other information that i was able to find out uh as well but first let's go through the presser with the orange county uh sheriff's office all right uh, well good afternoon so uh, thank you for being here um so we can bring as much attention as possible to the case of uh, missing juvenile madeline soto so let me first start by saying, uh, you know, I know as a parent, this is every parent's worst nightmare. Uh, many of our detectives and deputies who are working the case, uh, they also have children. Um, so they're working extra hard to find Madeline. We can't even imagine uh, the pain and anguish that Madeline's family is going through. So, but I do want to assure the community that we have well over uh, 100 deputies detectives, uh, intelligence analysts, and specialized personnel who are investigating this case and searching for Madeline uh, right now. And we will not stop until we find her. So Madeline is 13 years old. She has been missing since 8.30 on Monday morning when mom's boyfriend dropped her off near Hunters Creek uh, Middle School. Uh, it was he dropped her off actually near the Peace United Methodist Church on Town Loop Boulevard. So I'll kind of go through like a timeline of events uh, as we know it. Um, like I said, mom's boyfriend dropped uh, Madeline off at about 8.30 a.m. on Monday morning, a few blocks away from the school. At approximately 4.30 on Monday afternoon, Madeline's mom went to the school to pick her up and found out that Madeline was not there and had never um, reported to school, so she never actually entered uh, the school. <clears throat> and so we also learned that uh, Madeline left her phone at home that day. So we were called uh, on Monday evening at approximately 8 p.m. Our patrol deputies went out there, met with Madeline's mom at the school. Um, near Hunters Creek uh, to take a report on, on her missing daughter. So uh, we started the investigation uh, that night, uh, started canvassing the area, looking for any witnesses uh, or surveillance video. So later that evening, uh, while we were doing investigation, we did obtain um, an article of Madeline from the house. We called our bloodhound. The bloodhound did uh, an extensive search, which unfortunately did not provide any results uh, about her whereabouts. So our missing persons uh, detectives responded to take over the investigation. So they did uh, interviews with mom, mom's boyfriend, Madeline's friends uh, from school. Uh, we were able to access Madeline's phone, and there is information on the phone uh, that indicated that she told people when she turned 13, which was on February 22nd, she actually wanted to go live in the woods. Uh, so that was in her phone. And <clears throat> so during the course of the day on Tuesday, uh, detectives and deputies conducted ex extensive interviews, uh, uh, an extensive canvas. We collected video from the area. Uh, and again, conducted interviews with family members. So on yesterday, we distributed flyers uh, in the area near the school. Uh, as a matter of fact, Madeline's family had their own flyers. We're also distributing flyers uh, to family and friends and students at the school at the same time. Uh, so the house is in Kissimmee, where the family lives, uh, is being held overnight uh, by the Orange County Sheriff's Office and the Kissimmee Police so that we could secure search warrants. Uh, this is common practice in cases like this, and those search warrants should be executed today. At, uh, on Wednesday this morning, more than 50 members of our emergency response team uh, responded out there to the area near the school and conducted an area search for Madeline. 
And so we have a command post set up out there at, at that area. We also have a command post set up here at the sheriff's office uh, for the investigative side of it. Uh, so, you know, our detectives are continuing to do interviews and follow up on all possible leads. Uh, one thing we do in all missing person cases, especially missing juveniles, our uh, sex offender surveillance squad uh, goes out and makes contact with every single sex offender in the area um, of Madeline's last location. And so, you know, I wish I had uh, some more definitive answers. We just want to keep getting Madeline's picture out there. Uh, we want people who uh, may know something about her disappearance uh, to call us. They can call us anonymously at 1 800 423 tips. They can also call uh, 911 if they think they know what happened to Madeline. And again, uh, you know, it's every parent's worst nightmare, uh, but rest assured that you know, we are doing everything possible. Uh, we have an extensive uh, section dedicated um, to working solely on find, finding out where Madeline is, and I'll, I'll take some questions. But again, still early on in the investigation. I'll start over here. So um, right now, uh, the, the facts of the disappearance uh, don't qualify through the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for an Amber Alert. Certainly, if a, through the investigation it does qualify for an Amber Alert, we will send that out. Okay, someone asked, they're hard to hear the questions, so I'm going to kind of repeat them. Um, one of the media asked if, if there, why there wasn't an Amber Alert. Uh, I mean, we can go into that in another video, but, and I can post some more info on that. Amber Alerts have to meet certain qualifications, and that gets into a whole other area. But I know she's been listed as an endangered uh, child at this point. But yeah, Amber, the Amber Alert system has to you have to hit certain qualifications. There's no information to indicate that uh, there's another family member, um, um, an outside family member is involved, no, not at this time. They asked about if, about the boyfriend, uh, where the father is, basically the, the, the demographics interaction with the family. And I'm going to get more into that um, after the, he finishes the question and answers. I'm not sure. No, uh, just the information on the phone was that when she turned 13, which was just February 22nd, um, she was going to live out in the woods. So um, it's one of the reasons we're out there in that area searching. See, they're not giving us particulars. That was the question about the that she wanted to live in the woods. And that is my biggest question is where was that information found? Was it a... A text message with a friend, uh, a Facebook post, what exactly was it? And secondly, I have to put that out there that, and I know obviously these are investigators, and, and I'm not a detective, I've never solved a case, but you have to wonder if, if she actually wrote that message. And I can guarantee you that they are looking into uh, the boyfriend, the mother, all the family. So being that the boyfriend was the last to see her dropping her off at the Methodist church, not far from the middle school to let her finish her walk into the school. Uh, and that she did not have her cell phone and that there's a supposed strange message that she wanted to go live in the woods after her 13th birthday, which would have been last week. And she had a birthday party over the weekend. Yeah, it's, it's a little sus for sure. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, through either text messages or, or other social media messages. Yeah. Sheriff, uh, I know you had mentioned that Madeline asked to be dropped off at church away from school. The family also said that as well. I also mentioned that she asked to be dropped off an hour before school. Are you just suspicious about the location of where she was dropped off and the timeline of when she was actually uh, dropped off? Yeah, that's certainly um, all the things that our detectives look at. I know the initial information was that she said, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed of, of this vehicle, whatever, so drop me off um, 
at this location. Uh, we're still following up on on all of that. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly something that that we will look into. You know, why not why not drop her off at the school? But we're looking into all of that. So why didn't they drop her off at the school at Hunters Creek Middle School, and instead why was she dropped off? you know, down the road at the Methodist church? Very, very good question. Could be, it could legitimately be as simple as she was embarrassed to be seen with the boyfriend, the car. She didn't want him to see her with somebody else. Maybe she had a boyfriend. It, it could be legitimately something as, you know, innocent as that. Um, but I can tell you from, we've gone through all these cases that they are looking through, I guarantee you they're looking through, uh, any kind of cameras that would have been around this, the churches, uh, traffic cams, anything that they could find that that vehicle was on to see if she legitimately got out of the boyfriend's car, her mom's boyfriend's car. So we collected that video, uh, analyzed it, and it's a very, very grainy video, so we're not actually sure if that's uh, Madeline. But, we, but we've collected video um, from, the, from other parts uh, of that area, too. So anytime we have like a missing juvenile, we certainly look at everyone uh, that has contact uh, with that juvenile. That's one of the first things we do. So the investigation is ongoing. So yeah, anytime that we have uh, a missing uh, kid um, who who left her phone at home, you know, who was dropped off, you know, early a few blocks from school. We, we look at all of that. So, you know, I, you know, anytime a child goes missing, you know, to me, it's, it's always suspicious. And, and in this case, that's why, you know, we're putting all these resources um, towards finding her, you know, well over a hundred personnel um, are working to find her from Detectives to uh, analysts uh, to specialized patrol, mounted patrol, our emergency response team, and others. Did you also hear about the neighbors who carried anything that appeared to be obvious? Uh, not to my knowledge, no, nothing that was uh, beyond the obvious, yeah. Yes? Where? No, so we're, we're searching uh, all the areas uh, around um, that area where she was last seen. And then, of course, we're searching any area uh, where we've received any tips or uh, any areas that um, investigative leads have, have led us to. I can't tell you exactly when it was. It, 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 it obviously, it was before. Um, she turned 13, which was February 22nd, but that's all I can tell you right now. Was there any indication that there was some sort of turmoil in the household while she's telling folks that she uh, maybe was living homeless? Other than that, to, to my knowledge, there was no other uh, indication of turmoil in the house. How many leads that she was taken? Did it really completely affect? So, you know, that's why we have all these, these people out there. We don't know if she was taken. We don't know if, if she stepped away. Um, you know, it, it, you know, she left her phone at the house. Uh, so that's why you know, we're, we're putting all this effort into. That's why we're doing this press conference to hope, you know, someone from, from the public may have saw something. You know, it might not have seemed like a big deal at the time, but now knowing what Madeline looks like, uh, you know, maybe it's some information that could help us find her, her whereabouts. Yeah, so um, anytime a juvenile goes missing, um, we're always looking at uh, social media or phones. Obviously, I said we have our phone. We're able to analyze her phone. So anything that's involving gaming or social media, certainly uh, we take a look at. And, and just know that a lot of times some of that information from uh, you know, third-party social media uh, platforms does take time. We need to get subpoenas and information. Um, but, yeah, we are looking at that phone, and certainly that's you know, things that our detectives will look at. Sure. 
Yeah, so like I said, uh, you know, throughout the investigation um, and tips that come in, we, we search uh, different areas. I'm not exactly sure where they are right now. I just know that we've searched several areas out there. Uh, the the bloodhounds. I mean, uh, you know, we, we put out our own videos. Uh, you know, depending on on the scent and how strong it is, you know, there, there's cases of bloodhounds you know, tracking someone uh, a mile or even more away. So that's why we have bloodhounds here. You know, we use them uh, anytime we have a missing person. Um, and so, you know, that's one of the uh, reasons we not too long ago uh, we put out our scent evidence kit. Um, if you know, if you want to, you can get one of these scent evidence kits. You can put uh, a piece of their clothing, an article of their clothing inside this kit, and then if God forbid uh, someone who's elderly who, who may has dementia or Alzheimer goes missing, we can give the bloodhound, let them sniff that article, and, and they may be able to take uh, the bloodhound right to it. But they're they're incredible animals, uh, as you know, and they're they're very capable of, of doing those those searches. So the information I have is, is with that was it that it was that the mom's boyfriend um, dropped her off. That's the information I have. So all I will say is that our detectives are following up on every single lead uh, with the end result of finding uh, Madeline. Uh, that's that's their number one priority. But they, w in investigations like this, they they look at everything. Like I said, you know, we interview family members, we locate sex offenders that are in the area, uh, we look at video, we look at everyone's phones, we do search warrants to see if there's any indication in the house. Uh, so we do all of that, um, and it's an extensive investigation. So I said, well over 100 people are involved. So, you know, we're hoping uh, some tips come in um, that, that may help us. Uh, again, we're, we're going to continue to uh, look at uh, all the things that we do, uh, license plate readers, video surveillance, cell phone information from, from everyone, uh, and those are all the things that are going on right now. Uh, if we get tips, you know, certainly we will, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different areas out, out there. Um, and, and we'll send our, our search teams to, to different areas over the next couple of days. Uh, no, um, you know, we treat uh, a missing person as as a missing person, and I know there's there's different levels, and uh, people are on on the spectrum at different levels. So, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't change our investigation. It's just a piece of information that we know, and you know, based on our 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 training of dealing with um, people who may be on the spectrum, that that's something that we take into consideration about where they might end up, where they might go. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So I thought that was a very, it was a very good presser, um, by Sheriff Mina. Um, and he gave out a good amount of information because there has been literally nothing really to go by besides the posters. And, um, I have been anxious for information to, to give out to you guys also as well, because I want to share as much as I know here. And again, this is her, this is a missing poster here. I posted it earlier um, online as well as I've been sharing the posters everywhere. Uh, and I added uh, some of her photos here. Um, if you guys need any posters or anything, I am going to share more on the community tab. You can copy anything. You could share this video. Um, there is a Facebook group. I'll post a link to that in the information of the video. Uh, but especially, especially if you're in Orange County, uh, please, please do share this out. You know, if you're in the area, uh, it's very, very important because uh, gosh knows, you know, what's going on. Now, what I was talking about was about how she wanted to go live in the woods. I really wanted him to elaborate on that, but we all know he's not going to. It, it's possible, 
But from these photos that I'm seeing of Madeline, because we're seeing more and more come out, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like, you know, 13 years old. That seems a little odd to me. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that seems a little odd to uh, law enforcement as well. Um, and irregardless, uh, as far as the boyfriend goes of mom, if since he was the last one that saw her, he is the last one that was with Madeline and he uh, allegedly dropped her off at this church. He's going to be the number one POI, person of interest. And, and so, I mean, obviously mom is, um, she's got a stepmom and her father cause they're separated. So we're going to have family is going to obviously be immediately, uh, checked into. And if they have nothing to hide, they'll have nothing to worry about, obviously. But uh, the boyfriend is definitely, to me, in the uh, yellow area. we got to make sure that he's, he's good and clear. Uh, but as far as that's concerned, it, it is possible that she just truly wanted to, you know, go out in the woods and, you know, do her thing. But she's 13. You know, you're, when you're 13, you really don't know what the heck you want. And she just turned 13 on the 22nd. Uh, the photos of her, uh, a lot of them that have been released that look like from her birthday are from this past weekend. She had a birthday party. So, I mean, it's, it, it, to me, it's really odd that it would happen that fast, but you, you know, you never know. But, um, again, Madeline is described as having blonde hair and blue eyes, uh, at the time of her disappearance. Uh, again, she's where she was wearing a green sweatshirt, black shorts and white Crocs. And so that's pretty obvious. And then her backpack, also they mention her backpack all over the place. Uh, and I'll get that information here. It's not on the screen that I'm looking at. Uh, again, her birthday party was over the weekend. She celebrated being 13 years old, which, which is a big deal. You're going from preteen to teen. So, you know, that, to me, that's a big deal as well. Uh, her family uh, is has, a, has put out a heartfelt plea. Uh, her parents, siblings, and relatives, they are asking the public to help as much as possible in spreading the word, showing her, her picture, her posters, all that sort of stuff. Again, the backpack is a gray floral Jan Sport. Uh, I don't know if I can get a hold of a photo of it. I'm going to see if I can figure it out. And if you guys happen to get a, a, a photo of the backpack... You can drop me an email at uh, truecrimeshannon at gmail.com. Uh, but again, that green, uh, dark green hoodie, black shorts, white Crocs, and a gray floral Jansport backpack. That's the last that they believe she was wearing and had with her. What concerns me is she if she didn't show up for school at, I don't know what time school even starts now. She was dropped off right before 8.30. I guess school starts at nine, man. When we went to school, we started. I swear we started at school like seven something in the morning. But if she did not show up at school, uh, what about the school contacting mom and or dad to let them know that their daughter is absent? So that is definitely a question that that I have in the back of my mind. Uh, and it took mom trying to pick up her daughter after you know after school let out to figure out that she's that she's gone. So that's, that's a little, um, odd to me. I mean, that could have definitely, uh, gotten more urgent, uh, attention to her disappearance if they would have notified, you know, the parents earlier in the day. Again, I don't know if they did, and that's just not been mentioned, but, uh, I thought that this time, you know, in this day and age that, you know, calls or emails or texts, something would go out to the parents to let them know, hey, uh, you know, Madeline's she didn't show up for school today. According to the family, uh, her disappearance is described as highly uncharacteristic. She's known as a responsible girl who enjoys school. Uh, and there were no signs, according to them, of conflict or distress uh, leading up to Monday morning that could explain her prolonged absence. Uh, the fact that she doesn't have her phone with her, uh, is odd as well they state because she routinely has that with her as when she leave, leaves for school and yeah i mean we all know we, we always see these kids with their phones in their hand they are like glued 
to their phones. So the fact that she does not have her phone, that's another red flag, you know, for why would she leave her phone at home? All right, and again, the uh, numbers, if you want to call the Orange County Sheriff's Office, who has the 100, over 100 personnel working on this, and I can guarantee you that they have folks analyzing that video that they're having a lot of trouble with, and they could always reach out to, you know, um, you know, FBI, any other agencies that they possibly need. Uh, you can call 407 836 four three five seven or nine one one and they are just asking the community to continue to share relevant information uh, and to continue to share these posters uh, and the family is anxiously awaiting her return safe return and they are appreciating all the support uh, for uh, the safe return of Madeline Sophia Soto all right so Again, she's 13 years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot one, 110 pounds. And she has two distinctive moles on her face, as you can see in these photos. And if you have any information, call 911, call Crime Stopper, Crime Line at 407 423 8447. Just please, any tips are needed to bring Madeline home safe to her family. And again, at this time, it does not look like Orange County uh, Sheriff's Office is asking for the public's assistance in any sort of searches. They look like they got that under control. They just want her um, her face, her posters out there and any tips to be called in. If you happen to spot her, uh, please do call. I mean, that's, that's the most important thing right there. So I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open and I will keep you guys apprised of anything that I can. If not here on on a new video, I will definitely be posting on the community tab and in the Facebook group. And with that said, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.